Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1987 Super Mod. I'm your host, as always, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Here we are, back in action, Sunday, week two of January 1988, and the AWA is traveling to Winnipeg, Manitoba, and that's in Canada, in case you didn't know. All right, we are set and ready to select our venue for this evening. And I just learned that the University Stadium is indeed outside. So we are not going to do an outdoor show in January. Let's check our available options here. We have the Winkler Arena, um, University Stadium. We're going to go ahead with the Winnipeg Convention Center. So we should sell this one out easily since we can fit almost 7,000 fans into a stadium. And I think we're just a little, little bit of ways yet from being able to run the Winnipeg Arena. Um, and I would probably more than just a little ways. Yeah, the Winnipeg Arena seats 15,000. So we're a lot of ways from running the Winnipeg Arena again. Well, we could, but we're just not going to come close to selling it out, and we're going to end up losing some money. So let's take a look and see what our issues are here, if we have any. And it looks like it's all protege work. Thank goodness. All right, let's check a look for our absent workers here. Robinson is working for All Japan. Mr. Saito is going to work for New Japan. Let's see if that affects our card tonight. Billy Robinson is going to affect our card, yes. So, we'll make an adjustment when we get there. And let's go ahead and clear the screen back out. We'll get ready to book. And let's give ourselves a card rundown here. In our opener, Vivian St. John is going to face Candy Divine. The Top Guns are going to face the Destruction Crew. The Destruction Crew, of course, is making their debut. Wendy Richter is going to challenge Sherry Martell for the World Women's Title. The Terrorist is going to battle Baron Von Rotschke. Greg Wojciechowski is going to meet Wahoo McDaniel. Uh, a challenger to be named is going to face Greg Gagne for the World Television Title. Bobby Duncan is going to meet Jerry Lawler in the semi-main. And in our main event, Oliver and Summers are going to uh, chat. Excuse me. Oliver and Summers are going to challenge the Midnight Rockers for the World Tag Team title. All right, our opener, St. John versus Divine. It's going to be a 10-minute match. Did I misspell that? No, I spelled it right. All right, folks, it, I'm recording this. It's been a long week. I am tired. And we're going to keep booking here. So if I make some more mistakes during this uh, this broadcast here, forgive me. But uh, that's the state of affairs. I am pretty darn tired. All right, here's Candy Divine. And this one is booked up here. Let's take a look and see who won the last time. And... Uh, Candy Divine won the last time, so Vivian St. John is going to go over here in Canada. Top Guns are up next against the Destruction Crew. And we're going to leave this one open-ended, considering this is a new match. There's the destruction crew. All right, we got the appropriate pictures for the year. We fixed everything up. We're going to leave this one open-ended. By rights, the Top Guns should take the win, but we'll see what happens. Here we go with another ladies' match. And this has been an excellent series of matches for us. It has been a very good feud. Wendy Richter continues to chase Sherry Martell for that world women's title. There's Wendy Richter, and there is Sherry Martell. I can't remember who got the win the last time. It was Sherry Martell. So Wendy Richter is going to get the win here, but it's going to be by DQ.
Next, we have the Terrorist and Baron Von Rotschke. They're going to go 14 minutes. And the Terrorist, of course, is Stormy Granzig, who I don't think has much experience in the Canadian lands, so this should be interesting to see how he does. We'll leave this one open-ended, even though I'm 90% certain the Baron's going to get the win. All right, Wojciechowski and McDaniel are up next. 14-minute bout. And this feud has been going very well so far. Been very pleased with the performance of Greg Wojciechowski. He has fit right in here with our roster. And there's Wahoo, and I can't remember who won the last one here. Wojciechowski won the last time. So we are going to have Wahoo win this one. Next is our blank against Greg Ganya. So let's take a look here at competitors for that world television title, who we could have face off against him. Um, why don't we have the Iron Sheik face Greg Ganya? That can't hurt. Now, let's have Zhukov. Let's have Zhukov face him. And I think this is a 16-minute bout. It is. So there's Zhukov. And, of course, Ganya gets the C because he is the reigning champion. There's Boris Zhukov. There is Greg Ganya. World television title is on the line, and Greg Gagne is going to get the win. Now, I am going to go off on another mini rant here, and uh, a lot of you seem to like my rants. Here is the deal with Greg Gagne. I am tired of everybody online trash-talking Greg Gagne. That's another thing that drives me nuts. Yes, Greg Gagne did not have a good look. Yes, Greg Gagne was the son of promoter and AWA owner Vern Gagne. Yes, Greg Gagne got more opportunities than most because of who his father was. Yes. With that said, Greg Gagne got no better treatment than any other second generation star. And Greg Gagne was trained just as hard as everybody else by his own father in the 1972 training camp. So, Greg Gagne had to earn his way into the promotion through his own dad. Okay, now as far as ring skills go, Greg Gagne was a very, very talented wrestler. He also did a really good promo. He had decent charisma. So, if you listen to other wrestlers talk about Greg Gagne. And specifically, I'm talking Jim Brunzel. I'm talking even Jesse Ventura. I'm also talking Hulk Hogan at times has talked about him. At times, David Schultz has spoken about Greg Gagne. Ken Patera has spoken about Greg Gagne. Don Morocco has spoken about Greg Gagne. Jim Cornette has spoken at length about Greg Gagne. And you know what they all say? They all say the guy could really work. And he was a really talented wrestler. He just didn't have a good look. So if all these big names in pro wrestling are telling us 
that this guy was decent and could really go, that would have to mean that he really was decent and really could go, right? That's what I would assume. I tend to think the people that are some of the greatest wrestlers ever to live, Ric Flair has talked highly of Greg Gagne. Ric Flair made certain that Greg Gagne had a few stops in mid-Atlantic wrestling. So what does this tell you? Greg Gagne was a very good wrestler, He had an average athletic build because he wasn't on the gas like everybody else in the late 70s and through the 80s. And yes, he did well in his father's promotion. Yes, he received some preferential treatment. But the guy also worked really hard and wrestled really hard matches. And he and Jim Brunzel were a fabulous tag team. So please... All you Greg Gagne haters out there that have never even seen the man in the ring, please give him a watch and reconsider your stance on Greg Gagne because he really was a talented guy. Now, as far as his interviews and stuff go these days, the stories he tells, I think you can take that stuff with a grain of salt for the most part. Um, You know, if you ask him about his time in WCW, he's the reason everything in WCW got hot in the late 90s. I have a hard time believing that. However, with that aside, the man does have his place in pro wrestling uh, history, and he was a very talented wrestler and did a good job and was part of probably one of the best tag teams of all time. In fact, the PWI uh, years that came out in 2003 certainly ranked he and Jim Brunzel in the top 100 greatest tag teams of all time. All right, so with that said, our show is booked up here. Let's go ahead and start the show. I just want to double-check that main event because I was talking. Okay, it's good. All right, we're going to start the show. Candy Divine, I'm sorry. Vivian St. John gets the win with that wicked leg grapevine. 36 overall, no red text of doom. The next one could be. We got the red text of doom right there. A 33 overall. Look at this. Wayne Bloom and Mike Enos put up some decent numbers here in Canada. Terrific. Excellent. I like it. 33 overall. Still not a good score, but the Destruction Crew are a hit here right out of the gate. All right. Richter and Martell get us a 63. Nice score for the ladies. And Wendy Richter gets the win by DQ. There it is. Von Rochka gets the win here. With the Brain Claw, he scores a 65. The Terrorist scores a lowly 36. And the only penalty here is inconsistency and the declining physical ability of Baron Von Rotschke. All right, Wojciechowski and McDaniel only scores a 62. Both these men should be doing better than this in Manitoba. Something's not right here. Something is very not right. That's disappointing. Let's move on. Wow, Greg Gagne, who was super over in Winnipeg, only scores a 72. So this match gets a 68 in our title match here for the world television title. And we're heading to our semi-main here. Get a 78, very nice. Bobby Duncan beats Jerry Lawler by cheating, of course. And this is a non-televised event, so it's the only way Lawler was going to lose. So they're definitely, nobody in Memphis is going to see this one on TV. So Lawler was willing to lose here, and uh, Duncan gets the win. Now, let's hope this main event puts up some good numbers, because our card could be in trouble here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Marty Jannetty gets a serious injury here with a slack jaw. And the stinking match only scores a 78. This is not good, folks. I think we're going to take a hit here. And it's really not good having Marty Jannetty injured here. Really, really not good. Oh, boy. Let's finish up here. No popularity changes. Only a 76. I don't want to make a speech because I'm not overly impressed with anybody's performance. I take that back. We're going to give Wendy Richter 
and Sherry Martell some praise here. And we're also going to give some praise to Gene Kanitsky. I'm sorry. Yeah, Gene Kanitsky, who did a good job in his debut as a road agent. So great performance, great performance, good performance. And as you know, we picked up Gene Kanitsky to be our color commentator for our Canadian television show, but apparently he's doing some road agent work for us too. We have to see here now how serious this injury is to Marty Gennetti. If this is one where he's going to be injured for a while, we are going to have to strongly consider taking the title belts off of the Midnight Rockers, which I'm not pleased about. I was hoping for a very long title reign for them, but we're going to have to see here. So we head over to our briefcase here. We head over to medical. And five days. Okay. Five days for Marty Gennetti. No problem. Easy money. All right. Good. Good deal. I'm not so nervous now. All right. We can go ahead and clear that one out. Whew. We dodged a bullet here, folks. We dodged a bullet. And uh, we still got to wait two more weeks before Kurt Hennig as the figurehead works out for us. So there you have it. We are booked up. We are not booked up. We're completed with that tour date. It's time for our next section here. So it's going to be our next batch of uh, four, four weeks, which will give us our 12 towns. So everything will shift up one. And we'll get to that and get that all sorted out. And uh, we also have some spot shows coming up, of course. And let's take a look. We don't want to look at finance. You know what's a fun thing we've never looked at before? Let's check the Hall of Fame here. Yeah, we want to see everybody that qualifies. Bachwinkle qualifies, obviously. The Crusher qualifies, obviously. The Midnight Rockers qualify here. That's pretty cool. It's the headlining 25 shows that did it for them. Again, this thing is not built. This is built for episodic television, not a touring show. So headlining 25 shows is a really big deal, especially if you're um, just doing monthly pay-per-views and stuff like that. All right, Lee Marshall has qualified. And there's no other inductions. Well, you just wait. We have some up-and-coming people on the way. Our creative, there's our franchise players, of course. Kind of exactly what we knew. Next big thing, Scotty Steiner is number one. Mike Enos is up there. Who's our hot prospects? Look at that. Almost the exact same thing. Who can talk the talk? Jimmy Snuka is definitely a loss for us, but he was not happy. So it was time for him to move on. We have some serious, serious talent on this roster, everybody. And the sky is the limit as long as our guys stay healthy and as long as uh, when the contracts and the WWF doesn't snack, snatch everybody. And Crockett could do it so too. They both have huge money. So with that said, I thank you for tuning in, everybody. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and make sure to share this video. Join us in conversation at facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. And last but not least, if you would like version 7 of the supermod, please go to braddrake.net, drop me a line, and I'll be more than happy to send you the link to the picture pack and the database. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.